Peace, what up, what up, STS here for another simple review. Um, but, and this is, a sorry if I sound incoherent or very blurred, but I had some couple of shots before I came back home. I was drinking some uh, cheap plug for Jim Bean. I was drinking some Jim, Jim Bean maple whiskey. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Um, high tolerance on alcohol. I can drive home like you know whatever because I don't get plastered. But let's get all the mix here. The movie, well, I already took I don't have any cover about it. I don't have the DVD, the Blu-ray in my hand, but uh the last movie I saw. Because also too, here's what I can say about too is the this couple of movies that since I've got at Anderson, I get these movies and oh they're gonna go get so good. But now I look at they're just so crappy. I've already watched so many I already watched two films. What one film that I just fell asleep through I was like, no. And the other film I watched all the way through and couple and I went to sleep for a couple minutes and I said, help that movie too. And it's a cult film, supposedly. But you know what? In my estimation, it doesn't make any shit. It doesn't make any sense, and I don't care. <laughs> but this film right here, we're going to talk about It's a family film. It's one of the family films that I... I, I it's a series that I've seen. I've seen both of the, the, one, the first and second one. And now we're on the third and final film of the, uh, the series, if you can say. Now, the thing is, though, I mean... You can say after this, well, will there be like some like uh, direct video movies from this? Because they have a cool standpoint, it can make some money, probably. But I don't know. But the movie I'm going to talk about is the Night of the Museum, the Secret of the Tomb, and this is the final one. I was at my my library rarely because usually Marion's library takes the piss with movies. But let's go on. It starts with Ben Stiller, you know, like always, he's being his regular self, you know, Larry Daly. And it starts out with, uh, with like a presentation with the, with, uh, of all the people, of all the people and all the acts of the museum all together. And then, like, the, everything is going so good until they start, like, they start doing that. And they start going haywire and these, 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 these uh, guests of the museum. Ricky Gervais has his own date and, and everything. And, all shit goes haywire. All the carry, all the museum is back to their real selves, pissed off at the world and tried to hurt and destroy people. And they want to know what the hell is going on. And it's the damn tablet that, um, I'm trying to think here. Oh my gosh. Of the tablet, I can't say his name, Ak Mariah. Basically, because he's been the first one, because it's the tablet that brings him life. Well, it's corroding, like poison, or it's just being rotten to death. Like it, each, it, it's, each time you've seen the film, it's corroding with poison or whatnot. And the mission is that they need to go to this other museum, supposedly where uh, their his dad and mom are at. And but before the film even starts, it goes to this little back to the tomb of this guy and his father, which you realize it's, it's the very first uh, security guard of the museum, which is a.k.a. Dick Van Dyke and his character. So you see his childlike character, because you don't know for who's his child, but later on you find out that was him, Dick Van Dyke's character as a child. And his dad was his master of this character, and he took his plate, and the end will come. And uh, that's basically what the whole story is. They have to go to the center museum and they find out what the what's wrong with this tablet, or everybody's in, uh, all the all the creations are gonna go ape shit. I mean, basically die, turn to their own wax figures, not come alive. And there's some new characters here. You got Owen. You have Rebel Wilson who plays the security guard in the other uh, museum. Which her accent's just it's just weird seeing her in this film. I mean, this weird scene her doing this accent, like, oh, but I think, oh, no, no. I don't know, I don't really watch most of her films, I don't know what my, my wife does, she watches Pitch Perfect and whatnot, and uh, her, this, her, her, her casting on this was kind of okay, but I didn't really give a damn. Um, I do love the bit with the caveman, that's mimic, it's basically Ben Stiller in a caveman suit. I think that was funny as hell to watch. <laughs> um, but, the the story goes on, they go to this thing, and they, he brings a bunch of people with him, you know, 
he brings Attila the Hun with him. He gets Sacagawea. He gets it, um, Theodore Roosevelt, which is very hard. To, this is one of the movies that's very hard to watch because whenever he hearts, just seeing Robin Williams, it's just like man, it's just he's died, he's dead from us, he's gone. But I love the death. He's he's got me for so much stuff in my life for, for uh, his comedy and his uh, stand uh, up routine. No, but they end up finding they go to go into the museum. There's some funny parts in there left and right. Um, Steve Logan, I think that's his fucking name, I think it is. Steve Kogan, that's what, Steve Kogan and Owen Willis, Willison is the cowboy, and, um, a Roman soldier miniatures are, they're always hilarious to watch. Um, but they end up meeting a new character, Lancelot, who's a knight. He's pretty cool, but at the very end he's a cunt. And, but he didn't realize, it's, oh, I was a cunt, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Uh, but they go. They find out to. Uh, I can't. Where's his name is? Fair uh, Akmiria. I don't know. Randy Randy Malekith plays him, and he's the head mom, the head pharaoh. They see his mom and father, which I don't know who the hell the mom was, but I know the father was played by Bings Kinsley, and he said, "Oh, the the tablet needs more moonlight." So he knew poop in the moonlight, you know, or not. But then sooner or later, Lancelot takes the damn thing, saying, Oh, I need it. I have the gold. But he ends up going to a Lancelot play, which Lancelot is being played by Hugh Jackman, which Lancelot makes, his, makes all these names like Hugh Jackman. He makes fun of it saying Hugh Jackman's Huge Jackman or whatnot. It's hilarious. He thinks life is real after when you get out the museum, but really it's not. It's fake and whatnot. And they realize, you know, what they have come. At the very end, they start at before midnight. They're all going to die. And all their characters are all dying you know, or deaf. And Lancelot knows, <laughs> comes it down and, Don't you talk about my nose! He, he ended up talking about his nose for like two minutes of his dialogue. Or whatnot. I was like my ass. I was stoned up my ass watching this film. Me and my wife were laughing, cracking up. But there was a tearjerker. There was a tear jerk. Was at the twelve o'clock. You know, they all. It was. It felt like Pokemon, the first movie, when Ash sacrificed himself with the Pokemon battle, and I. And it just with Mew and Mew too. It's just this. It was just one of the things. But you saw him dying. You saw his Monkey Dexter or whatever. You know, silly dying. Just his face, this sad and just fall to death. It was a very tear jerker. And for me to say, yeah, it was a tear jerker. Uh, it was very sad and whatnot, and but they wanted to uh, at the very end, you know, their things together or whatnot. But they said, hey, since the tablet was with his family, he's found his mom and dad finally. They want the tablet to stay with him, but that means that everybody in the museum that Stiller has been working at, whatever his name, whatever Ben's point is, Ben Stiller's point is, Larry, it's done, it's over with, and. He told them that he would do it, uh, but he, he didn't want to do it. You know, it's sad. It's like, wow, this is it. I mean, out of all the films, this is a the third film. And it's the last film, supposedly. But I think there'll be some direct videos later on. Because with Rebel Wilson, maybe be in the future, maybe. I don't know. But it's sad. But they said, you know, it's, it's up. You know, that's how we're going to do it. And Rebel Wilson, she's the security guard for it. You see her a little... They, how they have to get into the museum and whatnot. She ends up falls in love with. She catches the caveman on the camera, and she ends up falling in love with the caveman. That's hilarious. It's all, ooh, 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 all this stuff, you know, dressed him up in his little twiggies and whatnot. But at the very end, though, she, he said, you know, just he's like thank you. And all, they don't say nothing, you know. And uh, tomorrow, you'll have one hell of a time since she's the she's the security guard for the uh, that museum. And it starts three years later, which she ended up comes back to the, reg the original museums to hang out. To bring, because they're having a special, like, exhibit. So basically, some of those exhibits are coming here for the, like, amount of time. And she comes in and brings a tablet. And then everything goes crazy. And the lights are going up and down. And it shows Jerry, Ben Stewart's character, walking past it and just looking at it, like, smiling away, and that's how it ends, and I thought it was pretty good. Do I recommend? Yes, I recommend the Night in the Museum series. It's based on a book series. I didn't know it was based on a book, children book, children book or whatnot, but I actually believe the first Night in the Museum, the second one, the battle at the Smithsonian, or whatever the fuck the word is, and now, uh, The Secret of the Tomb.
uh, apps. It's an awesome seek. It's an awesome secret. It's an awesome family flick, and I think you guys will all enjoy it. Um, the acting's pretty good. I love the CGI and everything into it. Nothing. It, it never. It never really got. It, it, on all these movies, it never got dull. I mean, you got some tear jerkers, but it never got boring or whatnot. So, but I just want to get this done, this review done, because I haven't had a review. Usually, I'm supposed to get a review done every day, but these last films I've been reviewing or watching, these I mean, it's just been total bullshit. I'm just trying to say is that these films I got, it's like, wow, this is really what I was really expecting. And plus, now we're supposed to do the next review is supposed to be the Evil Dead, the remake Evil Dead, and the Blu-ray is fucking up. It's not working. It's like, what's the point then? So I guess that's going to be the the next reviews, well, when the next movie reviews when I go back to my grandma's again, I'm going to get the DVD of the Evil Dead, the new one, not the Blu-ray, because the Blu-ray is taking the piss. But, once again, it's a Nine Museum, Secret of the Tomb, buy it, rent it, whatnot, let it grade B. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's great. Uh, is it replayable? Maybe. Maybe replayable. To me, there's so much movies that can be replayable. I mean, it can't be The Crow, it can't be The Terminator 2. I mean, some of these movies that can be replayable like, like that. This can be replayable and whatnot. It, be, it just has to be it for a while. But who knows? I mean, I probably remember this review. And since I'll have the review on YouTube, it's just like, you know, I can watch it again, you know. But that is simple review once again. And, um,. I'm gonna try to upload this in the morning, or whatnot. Now maybe, who knows? Because it's it's almost two o'clock in the morning right now, so I'm praying I get it uploaded until later on the day. But like I said, STS, peace, and we'll see you again for another review.